After submitting a proposal, Dr. Sylvie Ditchburn was selected to be an artist in residence at Bundanon. Bundanon is one of a group of properties on 1100 hectares situated on the Shoalhaven River, about 30 minutes drive out of Nara on the New South Wales south coast. Bundanon and its associated properties are owned by the Bundanon Trust which was established by the Australian Government in response to an act of generosity and vision by Arthur and Yvonne Boyd. Under its Artist-in-Residence program, Bundanon Trust makes living and workspace available to individual practitioners or small groups in all art forms. Places are offered in two categories, the first on the basis of proposals submitted in response to advertisements and the second by invitation. Let's go in here and see who we can find. Oh, he's an artist. Artist in residence. That's supposed to be. Artist in residence. Yeah. Getting all the paper making preparations. Uh -huh. From the beginning of his residency. Uh -huh. Got some paints on here. The paint shop, cost me fortune. Some masterpieces in the making. Yeah. Yeah. Nice studio. Yeah. yeah. Looks pretty good. Pretty easy. Nice little chair. Look. Bit hard to paint in that. This is the this is the looking chair. The looking chair. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. The masterpieces from the of That was done for an idea that um, Arthur and Barry Humphreys and I can't remember the third person. They were going to do an Australian version of the Magic Flute. But that was. Supposedly, an idea for one of the backdrops in it. Mm. Yeah. The magic flute. Mm. Yeah, well, the Australian version, but I don't know what.
think originally this must have been the nursery where you know, the kids could sit where they filled the doorway in. Really. Yes. So there was yeah. a doorway between the two bedrooms, yeah. and the only reason would be the kitchen. Yeah. to have a lot of images of Yvonne. Did she go out painting, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah she used to spend a lot of time. Oh, before he painted them, they were just rocks. Right. That's what yeah. I think. That's what I think. They're Arthur's rocks. We call this Sid's room. So, yeah, Sid Norman was just like a little bit.
The Arthur and Yvonne Boyd Education Centre offers experiential learning programs for up to 32 students at the Trust's beautiful Riversdale property. Spectacular river views and access to varied natural areas are features of Riversdale. And then they built that library, obviously in keeping with the original house, and this studio. Okay, but what was the original city about? A residency is available for practitioners in all forms interested in contributing to the centre's programs. The residency is accommodated in a self-contained one-bedroom apartment and Arthur Boyd's first Shoalhaven studio. Artists awarded this residency will give up to eight hours weekly to students through artist sessions presented in an informal learning environment. So, and this, um, this becomes for 2-2, two, two, uh, or 1-1, yeah. one, one, whatever. Yeah, yeah. If we have adults, usually it's 1-1 one, one or 1 for the whole thing, because mm -hmm. most adults don't need the right to sure. fall yeah. to a room. Yeah. Yeah. Got a preview here. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in this. Green patch. Just 
Empire Boundary National Park. Very nice. Camping area. The convenience of the land. Barbecue. Hey, yeah, where are you now? Still at Jarvis Bay. Oh yeah, but what's this place? I don't know what the beach is it. It's a green patch. Is it? This is a green patch. Yeah. Oh, I thought this was working. Alright. Working. That's perfect rock. Ablution block there first and then over further. And then here is where Arthur used to create all his masterpieces over on the shade of the trees over there. We've got the, coming up to the back of the house, the kitchen side of here. Gardens over there, which I walk through on the way to the studio. We are now at the front of the house. We are going that way. We are going that way there. And here's the house itself. Very nice. And above the lake, you can see the single man's quarters dating back to the original days of Bundanon. There used to be two of those, one on each side, as you can see the fireplace there on the outside, that used to be inside the second quarters, and it's basically one room with a loft for the bed. Open fireplace in there and that's it. This is the kitchen area. Which is separate from the main house. And from this area we go out to the, with the studio through the garden. Studio is down in there. And the gardens quite good. Sculptures. New bronzes. Many paths. from the front of the Arthur studio, that's a writer's cottage. Looking back. Now buildings are there they are. That's the It's an entrance road. Caretaker's cottage. Sheds. The 
Is that lazy or is that using your academic ability to come up with a better way of doing things? Yeah, well that's right. Of the um, 
of the area. It's still at, shut, it's still at Riversdale and the water comes, it's a small tributary of the Shell Hayden River and shows the water um, And where's Riversdale in relation to where you are now? Riversdale is, is where Arthur first bought the first property and that's where he lived first. That's where the education centre is and that's where we're, uh, Arthur built and uh, purchased his first building but he preferred to live and paint at Dunderland so he then purchased to paint and probably Dunderland. And this is Arthur's rocks, as I can say term because he's immortalised them virtually through his paintings on the shelf and this is the spot where I sat where Arthur would have uh, painted his book. Which is very beautiful. Is very beautiful. This is my interpretation of uh, Pulpit Rock, which is, uh, I can see out my window here, but that's from a view from the shell there with the low tide and sandbanks. Some of these paintings are from the forest, which is not far from here. And the uh, beautiful Rosella parrots at Blue Pie, by Madonna's uh, um, painting. In crimson red and uh, ultramarine blue wings are just so um, startling and beautiful. And this is another painting of the uh, Another view of the Shellhaven and the rocks and Ken and his canoe in the water. And this is the painting of um, the uh, amphitheatre, which is a beautiful little refuge. There's a lovely acoustics. And um, there's a lot of um, rock lilies and beautiful spotted gums. And um, there's a lovely place to sit and paint and contemplate. Ah, well, that sounds very nice. Yes. Mm, have you been enjoying yourself? This has been a lovely time here. And I've collected, did, it? did you get the spotted wood bar? The bottom of the bar is. Um, it's um, really good colour reference to uh, trees and the colours of an area. Oh. So I've collected a lot of these. Let me see. Beautiful red tree that just takes absolutely ages to grow, like an inch. That's the G-bung tree, isn't it? Every century. Small leaf G-bung. Yeah. So there's some rather stunning uh, varieties in there. Some interesting rock over there too. Yeah, the striations in it. This is the market for the uh, other bigger paintings which I plan to do. Mm -hmm. That one to that one fade out to a fade out. That's a fine. This is our accommodation. This is the kitchen area, and the computer, phone. Laundry in there. Up here we've got a lounge area, sitting area, if you like. Some Artworks on the wall.
bathroom, bedroom, oh, it's all very nice. And then the other end there's another unit, not quite as big as the one we're in, but still quite adequate. With some artwork left by a previous occupant. With a chainsaw art for the look of it. Bathroom and the bedroom. Very nice. Back into the kitchen. On our way down to the creek. And that's the local puppy called Bundy. Love going for walks. This is a bit of the backwater I mentioned that I brought the canoe down to yesterday. Go heads out towards the river. It's all very nice going down through there. I'm seeing all these little wildflowers, sea of yellow amongst all the lantana a few different types where Tim's been working with his environmental art. Just placing stones and whatever he finds. Got some cool kids down here as well and they made some there. This is where all those stones with the quartz in them comes from. It's a bit markings. Quite interesting. Quite a few of them here. Another one of Tim's works. for nature to take its course. Up on the top 
top up there is a, a lookout which I walk to. Gets a nice view of the valley. Another one of Tim's. Have a look at it. Doesn't stand out as much as some of the other ones. And a common sight down here is up there. You can see the vapor trail. This is some of the hillside that Sylvia's been painting. I'm just about to go up the track here to the amphitheatre. And just to picture where we are, to put it in perspective. We've got the writer's cottage over there. And our studio accommodation is just over there. It's for my own house. Just down there. And we're off to the amphitheatre. The sign says it's up this way, so I suppose we should head up the track here and see if we can find it. Here we are, just coming into the amphitheatre. Named because of its shape, backdrop and sense of enclosure suggested the amphitheatres of ancient Greece, this is one of a series of similar but generally less grand features that will follow the cliff lines around the Bundanon properties. All are rich in flora. In September when the rock orchids are in flower, the amphitheatre takes on an extravagant appearance with a profusion of creamy white blooms stretching from the rock faces near eye level to the top of the cliff line. The basin fills with water after heavy rain, hence the presence of paper barks and the water marks at the base of the rocks. Moss on the rocks. Very nice. Apparently when there's some musicians here they come up and have little concerts up here. Which would be very nice. And a tree up there. Makes some kookaburras. Nest. We've seen them flying in and feeding their young. This is a jibun tree. Small leaf jibun which has a red bar. Very fine leafed. Years to grow. Put the moss on the oh. very peaceful. The birds singing. Up on top of the ridge now behind the amphitheatre, heading up towards that lookout I showed from down on the river flat. Open scrubland up here. But there's some lovely little native virus that are around the place. Good to see here because I don't see any colour. Just made it up to the top here. Just about to go over to the edge. Have a look out up here. Here 
here I am. Have a look at it. It's quite a drop off. And over there we can see the old pulpit rock in the distance. That's Channel Haven. Everything down there. Not a nice view. Here are little farmlets down there. There's those sled planes that we were on before. Some of the bundling on paddocks down there. Combination and everything is can't see from the trees here. As well as all the side clouds here. There's some banks here. They're all a bit past their prime at the moment, but you can see them there. And there's these other little ones here which I don't have a name for. Oh, I don't know if they are. Don't think I can't see it. There's a viewfinder. Stuff on them. Very interesting. Now on the other side of the ridge from that lookout, heading back, but come over to the other side, as I said, and we're now looking out more or less east towards north. The area, and here a lot of noise down there, there's a bit of a quarry down there, and crushing rocks and lifting sands. But over here, way over in the distance, You can see Riversdale, market building. The spotted gum grows to 30 to 40 metres. Easily recognised by its smooth leopard skin trunk caused by the irregular shedding of bark. The light, strong, durable timber was used as wooden paving for early Sydney streets. In the Shoal Haven, spotted gum planks were steam bent and used in building sailing ships and coaches and later fishing boats. Oh, this is Caro Little's studio, and this is Caro, all the way from London, hoping to soon be a resident. Right? Very much hoping to be a resident, yeah. <laughs> not going to go home. <laughs> yeah. Saying all my materials. Yeah. 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 Well, I've got a lot of beeswax now, I can't believe it. It's, it's quarter the price of Oxford Art. Yeah, where'd you pick it up? I got it from the manufacturers and they sent me kind of free some nice little samples of oil of wax, which is... Oh, yeah. yeah, straight to the manufacturer. Yeah, I think always, always go to the manufacturer. Yeah. Best way, and, and but I'm still going to get it because earlier, you know, they, they should know how the products work. Sometimes these guys are working in the shop, don't they? That's right. So I, I, I guess that would cool sound. Yep. I hate my voice, that's a good one. <laughs> well, we've all got one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suppose oh. at, at least it's kind of different being in Australia because my, my accent is different. Yeah. Very English. And these major shapes here, are they from the sandbanks that you've been looking the at? The shapes are all from the, the tidal river, the Shoalhaven, yeah. and the shapes left by the tide going out. Uh -huh. um, and then th these will be that figure that is being filled now will actually be a, a lot more full of wax and it'll have traces going over. It's all about traces and um, time passing quickly uh -huh. and the river flowing by. Mm. Mm. 
part of this morning has been even more little traces you see and they go into the water and it's just so beautiful. I've actually really tried to photo, you know, get it on the slide because it's just so beautiful. We get these, um, these shapes appear. I, just, I get so excited about it. But like this, I mean, you know, can you believe it? Like kind of these weird kind of love heart shapes that are on mm -hmm. clovers. And then the tracks go into the water. You can just see them because it's so briny and then just gently trace across the sand. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of really is. So yeah, it's a pretty wonderful place. Yeah, it Un really is. unfortunately, our time's running out, isn't it? Well, I know, even Tim was kind of getting a bit frantic because Kath's been here, mm. and I think that eats into working too. Mm. 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 Dominic coming on Sunday, but actually, that's all right, it's a kind of last week, so I can probably just kind of try and sit back and relax a bit and serve sort of things. So. The river. Oi, who's that up there? <laughs> I wonder why it's pulling up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm.